So, hello, and welcome to this week's top five. Uh, the week of, what is this, June 30th? Yep. 2016. I'm Christina Reese. And I'm Brandon Sack. So, you were in Galveston today. Why don't you show our audience what you purchased? Just listen to that sound. Just It's, it's a shell trivet. This is, this is maybe the best piece of art I've seen this year. Number five this week is Glossolalia at the Texas Gallery in Houston. This is a group show. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian Glennie, a director of Texas Gallery, um, has been collecting self-taught art for a long time. This work is not for sale. It's a self-taught art group show with some oldsters and some youngsters. Uh, Howard Finster is in the show. Esther Pearl Watson's in the show. Thomas Burleson's in the show. J.B. Murray, Bessie Harvey. I think it's about ten artists or so. This is been the year for self-taught art self-taught art you know there's there's the show uh by stephanie smither or the stephanie smither collection at the manil right now yep. there's a show that just went up at the art museum of southeast texas in beaumont um of course the own or the orange show is doing what it's always been doing but there's there's really kind of been an emergence of self-taught art yeah Eamon carter's like, dealing with it i think right now or just yeah. recently and texas is a hotbed for for collectors of this work and uh places to show it this should be a really good show obviously this will be rock solid all right so number four this week is paperweight this is at conduit gallery in dallas another group show this is curated by stephen Le this is um, He's great. He's one of our sort of local treasures in terms of being an artist and uh, a professor, an academic, a curator. He's good at organizing artists and shows in a in a pretty crucial way. This is a group uh, of people who are either recent graduates of of the programs that he has something to do with at SMU and UTA, um, either recent. MFAs or their current MFA uh, candidates or their BFA candidates. And it's all works on paper. I don't know that there's a connecting theme necessarily. I think more than anything, it just has mm -hmm. to do with scale and material. But well, it'll be all thing. new names to, to a lot of us. So number three is uh, Derek Rankins, and it's called The Part and the Whole Part Two. So it's happening at uh, – it, it's a place in – kind of northern Austin. I, it looks like a residence. I don't think it's an art space, um, but Rankins is a, a digitization lab manager at the Harry Ransom Center, and before that, he was uh, a Dallas MFA, right? Yeah, he went to UNT. He's a young artist, and I don't know how long he's been in Austin, probably not more than a year or two. He started this project when he was still an MFA at, at, at uh, UNT, and I think he's, it seems to me like what he's done is he's concentrated on a certain area or neighborhood or um, a feature. And he's gone ar around that thing and found the detritus, both natural and man-made detritus. And he's found patterns in the, in the things that he's finding. And he's sort of doing a taxonomy of it by photographing each found thing. Or some, I think in some cases he's actually maybe going out and procuring these things, photographing them, and then printing them all on it, generally 8 by 12 although there's some variation, and then presenting them in this sort of, it's like taxonomy, it's like and he's found these patterns and you can find these patterns and some of them are, would be unexpected and some of them are like trends and what kind of detritus shows up out in the world. So for this show he digitized an entire bag of peanuts, uh, a couple of TV tray dinners, and then he has this like ball of photographic material collage detritus this huge ball basically and uh so this is a one-time event on july uh 2nd from six to nine but it's actually up on view on ebay right now so the deal is this entire suite of work all like what 90 prints and the huge photographic ball is being sold on ebay so and the starting bid is a dollar. I don't know if there's a reserve or not. Yeah, uh, how long is the auction? Does it last through at least the opening? It ends when the opening ends. Your, your smartest, the smartest thing would be to not go to the opening and to sit and bid on it and snipe people instead. But you can do that on your phone. You can, but it's easier on a computer. Oh. Number two this week is Terraforms. This is at our gallery in San Antonio. 
and it's a group exhibition curated by Luis Chavez. He was the owner and co-founder of Plasmo Contemporary. This is kind of like a re-emergence of Plasmo Contemporary in another space. Is that does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I think once Plasmo uh, kind of stopped having their own space, they became you know they became an idea a rather than a, rather than a space. So they're a curatorial idea now that kind of goes around and does different shows in different spaces. Right. The artists, uh, I know I know at least two of them are based in Texas. There's one who's in Brooklyn. There's one who's in Seattle. Uh, but the theme of the show that all artists apparently somehow tie into is the idea of modifying the atmosphere and surface topography of a planet in order to make it more inhabitable. I like so, that. So number one is WeChat, a dialogue in contemporary Chinese art at the Asia Society in Houston. So the idea of the show is based around an app that's called WeChat, which is uh, kind of like a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram in one that a lot of uh, young Chinese people use since Facebook, Instagram, Twitter are banned. Um, mm. So the show consists of 10 Chinese artists, and all of the artists in the show were born uh, – after 1976, after the Cultural Revolution. Yeah. So instead of, you know, looking at Tiananmen Square and a bunch of older political ideology, these artists are all a little more focused on the future and um, a lot of issues of personal identity rather than kind of a cultural identity. So what really struck me about the show is a lot of the works have a real subtle tenderness to them that... Um, you don't necessarily expect, but then you stumble upon it and you're, you're just kind of exposed to this, uh, this, this raw emotion about them being who they are and being in the situations that they're in. And it, it's just really, it's really beautiful work. And it closes on July 3rd. So you have to go see it now. It's now or never. Mm -hmm. Well, good. So what are what are your, what are your big plans? You know, Gonna watch some fireworks. Gonna swim in some pools. Eat too much barbecue. It's normal it is our way. It is our yeah. way. America.